the workshop today, I want to focus specifically on runtime performance. Previously, I was uh, building uh, a lot of content related to making our bundles more. But as you saw yesterday on the keynote, the Angular team is working in the exact same direction. So we have Ivy, and Ivy can allow us to build a Hello World, which is only 2.7K. And we have amazing tooling underneath um, in the Angular CLI, which allows us to tree shake our application, apply different uh, dead code elimination techniques, and so on and so forth. However, regarding runtime performance, everything is in our own hands. So we need to take care of this. So let's see what is actually going on and why it gets invoked that often. Each time when the user presses a key on the keyboard, we're going to invoke the multiple times the change detection for first the app component, which is the root component in our app. Right after that, we're going to perform the first traversal. So we're going to go to the employee list component for the sales department. We're going to compute the numeric value for the first employee for the second employee, and so on and so forth for the, all the employees in the list. We're going to do the exact same thing for the other department. So we're just typing something into the text box, but the change detection gets invoked for each individual component, although there are obviously no changes. So what we would want to do is to invoke the change detection for each individual employee in the list only when we get a new list, right? It makes sense, because otherwise we have already computed this data, so we don't want to recompute it. But if we get a new list of employees, we would want to go through each individual employee and recompute this data again. So we can use immutable.js for the purpose. How many of you have actually used immutable.js? All right, a couple of you. Well, this is a technology by Facebook, which implements a lot of immutable data structures in a smarter way. So internally, they are using persistent data structures with partial persistence. And this has two important characteristics. First. We're going to get a new reference every time when we intend to apply a mutation on top of a given instance of a data structure. So we are adding a new list to our uh, immutable list, and we're going to get a new list. So the initial list is going to be unchanged. And also, we need to copy the entire data structure. Uh, we don't need to copy the entire data structure because internally immutable JS is reusing everything it can from the original list. And this should look a little bit better after we refresh. And there is one final optimization that, optimization that we need to perform. We haven't actually changed the change detection of the list components to use on push. All right, we can save this. And now we can start typing. Yeah, it's so much faster, right? Yeah. So functions like this are called pure functions. And uh, in Angular, we have a concept which is in inspired from pure functions. These are the pure pipes. Pipes, uh, I guess you're mostly familiar with them. They are used for just data processing. They can be either pure or impure. And the pure pipes are kind of the alternative of fu pure functions. They are kind of inspired from them. So they are stateless. And Angular realized that the pure functions are always, always going to return the exact same output when invoked with the same input. An example for a pure pipe is the date pipe, let's say. An impure pipe is the async pipe, which some, holds some state internally. So it can hold a reference to, the pro, to a promise or an observable. So it is not uh, a pure pipe. My point with this example was to show that it's not necessary to do super fancy updates running cold outside of the Angular zone and something too Angular specific all the time. There are some concepts such as buffering and caching, which we can apply in all different technologies. And uh, we, can, we don't have to do like reinvent the wheel this way. So with the real-time updates, uh, we, we got uh, such performance improvement and also slight UX improvement. So that was everything that I had today. And uh, I'm actually happy to announce that that was kind of the official release of Rhyme as well. So. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.